Hello, my dear paint monsters. How are you today? I hope you're doing fine. I'm Aga, and this is Hungry for Paint, a channel about handmade watercolors. I've been receiving requests to review today's maker for quite a while now, so here we go. Ladies and gentlemen, I present to you the watercolors from Artistic Isle. I managed to snag a bunch of samples of Artistic Isle watercolors second hand. Somebody was selling their dot cards, they haven't been used. They were all originally packed and they came at a good price, so I thought it a good opportunity to get a lot of colors and review them for you. So I can't really tell you anything about the customer service side of things because I haven't experienced that buying the samples second hand from somebody else, but I'm going to show you the paints themselves. The dots are pretty small, but most of them are adequate, do some swatching. Some were barely enough or not quite enough to do the full swatching process, but thankfully I had some doubles, so I managed. However, in general, with very small dots, some pigments might not activate properly and they look paler than they do when you have a full half pen, for example, or even a quarter pen. That's what happened with the smallest sample of Juicy Pear, for example, and to some extent uh, with Georgia Peach, but thankfully I had doubles and the other dot was bigger and it activated all right. So I believe that the colors I got should be pretty close to what you would be getting if you were going to buy some half pens. So the colors I got are mostly more traditional. There's nothing very unusual about them. Azalea and daffodil are quite unusual because of their texture, because usually yellows and reds don't have that much texture. And also Mission Oak is quite an interesting color, some kind of an iron oxide involved in here, and it's got a very strong texture as well. In some colors, the pigment doesn't really spread evenly. Like I said, daffodil, azalea, uh, juicy pear as well. I'm not sure if it's just the nature of the pigment or if it's because of how it was processed. Drawing from my own experience of making watercolors, I suspect that these might not have been mulled uh, for a very long time. It is of course a matter of preference whether you like the color to run more smoothly or if you're okay with the texture that you get. The texture in African Violet and Mission Oak is also unusually strong. I must say I quite like the cyan from the World Traveler set. I think that Blackberry and Plum are quite nice colors as well. I quite like the shade of Summer Strawberry, however it dries really chalky and it seems to develop a kind of a whitish sediment on top when it dries. There's also a certain chalkiness to Terra Vert, Poppy, Ivy, Hydrangea, which has a bit of that white residue as well, Georgia Peach and Blackberry a bit. Some of the colors do look a little bit pale and lack the juiciness like Sunrise, Terra Vert, Cypress, Cyan and Hydrangea. So it depends on what you like really and what you're looking for. If you're looking for deep, intense, vibrant colors, then you will probably not like many of these colors. They do look a bit chalky and some flow rather unevenly, but it depends on your preference, I think. These paints don't rub off, aside from Japanese slate, but about that in a moment. They stay where you put them, and even if you lightly rub the paper with another piece of paper, it doesn't change the appearance of your artwork. However, these paints do transfer. If you're working in a sketchbook, I think this could be a problem for you, as they stain pretty badly. So it will be of no concern to you if you're working on loose sheets of paper, but if you're working in some sort of a sketchbook, then these might not be for you. The colors that transfer are daffodil, azalea, ivy a little bit, hydrangea a little bit, juicy pear, summer strawberry, blackberry, plum, hibiscus, mission oak and poppy, quite a lot. And Japanese slate seemed capable of getting pretty dark when I started swatching, but it became increasingly difficult to get a decent intensity of the color. So it's a rather pale pigment in general, and it is very gritty. It has a lot of particles in it. The grain sticks to your paintbrush, and when it's dry, the particles uh, rub off a lot. So even if you brush them very lightly, with a dry paintbrush when your artwork is finished, they're all going to fall off, basically. One more thing I noticed about these paints is that if you paint more layers on top of one another, 
in case of some colors the paint actually piles up physically and it's visible it happens with poppy with cyan uh, with primrose with hibiscus to a certain extent so i think it's something worth knowing and these paints are a little bit tricky to layer they seem to reactivate for a relatively longer time after you've painted and even though they seem to be completely dry it sometimes turns out with some other colors that when you try to apply another layer you're still actually working wet in wet so definitely extra care is needed here especially if you want to keep sharper clearer lines but that's my subjective impression i did not actually measure the time required to dry for these paints so if you use them just be a little bit careful and see if this is how they behave for you as well these paints come at about eight to ten dollars per half pen you can also buy quarter pans for three dollars so you can sample these uh, pretty easily and if you buy them in a set they are cheaper for example a set of eight pans costs about 45 dollars so in sets you pay more like five to six dollars per pan so they're pretty affordable Personally, I would like some of the colors to be a bit more intense and I'm not really very fond of the chalky feeling these have. I'm not a big fan of the kind of texture that Daffodil, Azalea and Juicy Pear create. But this of course depends entirely on your personal preference and these might suit your purpose perfectly. This is for you to decide whether this kind of effect is what you're looking for. I do like Mission Oak. Blackberry is pretty nice and I would have liked Summer Strawberry a lot if it wasn't so chalky. So there you have it. That's everything I've got for you today. I hope you enjoyed this video and found it informative. This is the last time I see you before Christmas. So happy holidays guys. Whether you're celebrating, I'd like to wish you all the best and hope you have a good time. Hopefully I'll see you next week. Bye bye.